Hello, welcome to Mr. Mathwell here. Uh, this is Pre-Calculus 30, and this is going to be a review video for Chapter 7. Now, in uh, this new unit, we're talking about exponential and logarithmic functions. Chapter 7 focuses on the first of those exponential functions. So there are some key terms that you should know. Uh, again, this is a review, so hopefully you know these key terms. What an exponential function is, which we'll, we'll review, of course, this video. Exponential growth exponential decay, half-life, and an exponential equation. So we'll go over each of those here in this video. 7.1 talks about characteristics of exponential functions. So when we have an exponential function, the key is, is that we have the x, or the uh, independent variable, is in the exponent position, okay? It's an exponential function, exponent function. And so x is in the exponent position. Um, the graphs of the exponential functions uh, look like this. Now c is just a regular old constant. It's a number. okay, And the power is the x. So where c is between 0 and, uh, sorry, is greater than 1 in this example, where c is greater than 1, so 1 1.5 or 2 or 10 or 100, then the, the graph is increasing and it kind of goes up in this fashion. So it's not it's not linear, right? It's not a linear graph. It's not a quadratic where it kind of comes up on both sides, right? It's not a quadratic. It is an exponential. So as we go further this way, it comes closer and closer and closer to y equals 0, but never, of course, touches y equals 0. And if c is between 0 and 1, we have an exponential function that looks like this. It drops from left to right. So it comes down and it uh, then gets closer to y equals 0 on the right side, okay? So that's when the c, okay, so this would be like y equals, you know, 1 half to the power of x, let's say. And this, of course, would be like, kind of like 2 to the power of x, okay, as an example. Now, there's this is an interesting question, and maybe you've thought about this, maybe your teachers talked to you about this, or maybe you've researched this, but why are we only considering positive values of c? Well, I'll let you know. Um, if c is negative, notice, you know that um, if you take a negative number, to an, an even power, the result is um, positive. If you take a negative number to the uh, to an odd power, then it's negative. So if we had a negative value for a c, then as this x changes, what would happen is that the points, instead of all being continuously on one side of the x-axis, what happens if you, you would have points down here as well. And it would kind of look, look like this. This is not a continuous function. And actually, I think I've graphed this over here on Desmos for you. y equals negative 2x. You can't even see it. Like, you can't even see it because those points are uh, scattered. Okay? And so, so that's why it's not, a, it's not a continuous function, which you'll talk more about in calculus. But you can't graph it. It's not connected. Each point does not seamlessly move to the next point by, by nature. Okay? By philosophical nature. So that's, that's kind of uh, talking about that one a little bit. All right, moving on. Exponential growth and decay. Right, let's talk about those. Well, um, you can probably imagine that an increasing function would represent a situation where we have exponential growth. The graph forms an exponential graph, an exponent type, an exponential shape, and it is growing or increasing. Um, if something is decaying over time, then it would follow an exponential type graph, but it would be decreasing. Okay, so the amount of organic material, let's say, um, as a, you know, a deceased animal decays or something, right? The amount of material uh, left that isn't decayed would get smaller and smaller, and so on. That's, sorry, that's a bit of a morbid example, maybe, but it's the first one that popped into my head. Uh, how about half life? Let's talk about half life now. Half life is a specific type of uh, exponential decay when we're talking about uh, radioactive chemicals. Let's say if you're into chemistry or if you're going to be studying uh, chemistry, you're going to be talking about uh, radioactivity and half life of radioactive material. So the half life is how long it takes a radioactive material to uh, disintegrate or to nuclearly disintegrate. I don't know if that's a word, but disintegrate in a nuclear uh, uh, fission okay, or fashion to, uh, to, to half of its original mass. So the smaller the half-life is, or the, the less, the lower the number is here, then the more radioactive and, and the more decay it undergoes, right, over time. So if you have a half-life of, 
5,000 years or 5,700 years like carbon-14, then it doesn't disintegrate, you know, uh, very rapidly. But here is uh, an exponential decay equation here, talking about half-life. If we if we have one gram of, this is uh, radon-225, I guess, uh, then if it's a half-life of 15 days, then after 15 days, then we would have half of a gram. And then after 30 days, or two groups of 15 days, we'd have half of that again, then half again, half again, half again. So notice that this kind of comes down, but it, it doesn't drop as much over time because half of something small is something pretty small. And also notice that this graph would never touch zero, it would never actually get to zero, technically, because half of a finite number is never zero, right? even if it's really small. So that would never technically get down to zero. Okay, so that's half-life. Uh, growth, decay, half-life. Okay, and there's just a bit of a summary for 7.1. 7.2, we get into transformations of exponential functions. And you've, you've had transformations the whole semester so far. So you know what that means. And uh, I'll just quickly review that. The A value, notice, is the A value is not the C value. Okay, it's different. This is A times C to the power of X. So your C value is still your base, really, of this uh, exponential function. The A value is this right here. And really, this indicates the y-intercept, doesn't it? Because you know that all, um, well, most uh, exponential uh, equations without an A value, or an A value of 1, I should say, goes through y equals 1. And so as soon as you multiply it by 4, it gets stretched vertically, and so that intercept becomes 4. Kind of neat here. Uh, if A is negative 2, guess what the y-intercept is, negative 2. And of course, that helps you realize that it flips uh, down, right? So if you have a negative a value, then it flips about the x-axis, right? The y values were positive, now they become negative. So it flips vertically this way, okay? Vertical stretch, flip vertical with a negative. Uh, as far as the b goes here, same thing. It's compressing vertically. So if b is 1, it's sort of a normal you know, width exponential graph. But um, as soon as you put a number in here, in this spot right here, so in this case, if it's a 3, so really it gets compressed by 1 third. Okay, so the horizontal stretch by a factor of 1 over b. And, and we know this from other transformations and other functions, right? If we have a number that is between 0 and 1, that means it stretches out. It gets larger. So 1 divided by 0.5. So it gets stretched by a factor of 2, really. The negative inside here flips the graph like this, okay? So the x actually gets flipped. Positive x becomes a negative x and so on. So that's this horizontal flip. Same as before. And of course, easy peasy here, vertical translation, right? Um, if you have uh, a k value, uh, that's uh, right here. The, this is the, the one that's outside of the function here. It just raises it up or down. And the h value here, uh, that would be the addition or subtraction of something up in the exponent position with the x. That's what moves it left or right. And of course the signs are opposite. If it's y equals 6 to the power of x plus 2, that means that y equals 6 to the power of x gets shifted to the left two units. And then if it's uh, minus 3 like this, it would be shifted to the right three units. All right, six, uh, 7.3, the last section, is a very short chapter, it talks about solving exponential equations. So an exponential equation, of course, would be an equation that has um, uh, exponent where the exponents are x. Okay, so the variable that we're solving for is in the exponent. Exponent is in the exponential position or the exponent position. Now, algebraically, okay, how you do this algebraically is um, you look at the bases, and if you can get the bases to have the same base, or you can rewrite them in a way to have the same base. So in this case, this is... 2, uh, 8 can be written as 2 to the power of 3. So 8 is a power of 2. So if you can get both of them written with the same base, then you're flying. Okay. Uh, please notice that when you have a power raised to a power, you have to multiply. So notice that I multiplied this 3 uh, here to get 3x minus 3. And then now that we have the same bases, now I can just let the exponents equal each other and solve by normal means. And of course, you can, you can check that using your calculator. So 2 to the power of 3 over 2 uh, equals 8 to the power of 1 over 2, right? And you can check that in your calculator, and that is, in fact, true. So here's a, another type of uh, exponential you know, equation where the bases, they can't be written the same, 
Okay, so there's two different ways you could do this. Really, um, in this chapter, we're not looking into logarithms, which logarithms will make it easy to solve this type of question. We're going to learn that next chapter. Um, so right now, um, there's two different things you can do. You can solve it graphically, uh, and uh, that is that you type in the equation of the left side as a graph and the equation of the right side as a graph, and you graph them simultaneously, and you look for the intersection point. We've done this. Uh, again, all semester so far. So here, the solution to x is the uh, the x value on the intersection point. Okay, it's not the y value. Okay, the y value doesn't really matter here because this is what we're looking for. This right here, and so this is going to be the x value on your intersection point. So the value for x here is 2.709. Now trial and error. So I'm going to just talk about this here. Uh, you might be asked to just do this without a graphing calculator. Okay, what do you do? Well, you might have to just revert to trial and error. And so you would pick a number, like let's say we pick t equals two. Well, that is two squared is four and three to the power of one is three. So that's, they're not the same, but they're kind of close. Let's say you pick another number and you just do trial and error. Well, they're still one apart, so let's keep going. Oh, now this is quite a bit, see 16 versus 27, that's not anywhere near. So then you might kind of go back to, okay, I'm gonna pick another number here. And eventually, again, it's trial and error, Okay, it's using your intuition. Um, you know, what do you know about the situation? How can you guess? And uh, yeah, you just kind of, you know, here I picked 2.5 as my x value, and that's actually gotten us pretty close. And of course, we would zero in on maybe something like 2.7. Okay, I know trial and error is a bit hokey, but uh, you know, logarithms are coming next semester, next chapter. And um, uh, of course, graphing, if, if you have the ability to, to use your graphing technology during your exam, then you can do that. Um, but um, for uh, for those of you this year in 2020, this is why I'm making this video. Uh, if you guys are watching this video uh, on the test, I will not require you to use a graphing uh, calculator at all. So uh, you just want to focus on the algebraic part. But uh, normally we would have to be able to use your your graphing technology just to graph both sides of the equation and find the intersection point. All right, so that is 7.1 to 7.3, and a little quick review for Chapter 7, uh, Pre-Calculus 30. Um, yeah, leave a comment below, like or subscribe, and if you have any uh, questions, please reach out. Uh, but yeah, look over your stuff. Make sure you've done your homework, and um, yeah, good luck on your test tomorrow.